Hey everyone, so we have the pleasure of having George Reed with us today, who's a former Amazon employee and also the founder of LaunchPod Academy. So LaunchPod Academy is there to help entrepreneurs and small business owners grow strong uh, Amazon brands and also to create sustainable uh, income. So I've got George here with the aim to, you know, ask him some silver bullet questions uh, with the intention to add some real value to your Amazon strategy and ultimately to execute some, you know, improve how you extract sales from the channel. So George, thanks for joining us, but I'm just going to jump straight into question one here. Put you on the Far away. So in terms of Amazon review strategies, in Australia, yeah. what, what do you think that, you know, Amazon Australia sellers could be doing better in that space? I think one of the first things you need to address, and the Australian marketplace or the sellers in the marketplace are certainly behind on this, is the benefits of those reviews. Um, I think conversations I've had, people aren't necessarily focusing on it or understanding the importance of it. Therefore, they're not putting adequate resources towards it. So when we think about reviews, it's not just the social proof that you're getting, which is going to help conversions. And that is one of the big, big factors is you're giving people social proof, which is encouraging conversion rates. But it kind of helps that flywheel that we talk about of if there's social proof and we've got good conversions, that's going to push you up the sales rank. Um, which is going to increase your click-through rate or the number of clicks you're getting, um, but also your click-through rate because you've got that kind of X number of five-star reviews. So it's a flywheel that you're looking to kind of get going on Amazon, and a lot of that is going to come from your reviews. If you don't get to that magic number of around about 21 reviews, which is where the social proof really kicks in, it starts to accelerate, it's going to be difficult initially to get those clicks um, and get those conversion rates kind of pumping. So that's a big, big aspect of it, understanding the benefits first. So it's going to help your sales rank. It's obviously going to help your click-through rate, your conversion rate. Um, and in turn, it's then going to help with your, your advertising and stuff as well. You're going to get more clicks. You're going to get more conversions, which obviously drives down some of your advertising cost per click. So that's a big component people need to understand. In terms of the different strategies that are available to them, as an Amazon and obviously the US, they release a lot of the things there first, so kind of early reviewer, Vine, all these sorts of things. And they're, they're really, really good now. Something we recommend jumping on if the early reviewer program is available to you, it's going to kickstart some of your reviews again with Vine. But I think in order to really accelerate your reviews, once you've got the first five, the first 10, you need to be looking at your, your operations a little bit. And one of the things that still works so well is having some sort of um, call to action within your product, within your packaging, on your packaging, an insert note, some sort of product insert like that to connect with the customer and get them to do something. So it could be as simple as having a little insert inside, which could be business card size, just asking for a review and then more importantly, like my mum buys shared loads of stuff on Amazon, but if I asked her to go and leave her a review, she would say, how do I do that? And like, she's certainly an Amazon buying expert, but when it comes to actually leaving a review, there's a, there's a pain point, there's a blocker, there's a hurdle. So simplifying that process with an insert card saying, if you're happy, leave us a review, and then go on to .com.au forward slash RYP, review your purchase, rate your purchase, it's going to take them to a page. It's got the recent orders. They can identify the product of yours that they've bought, and then they can go leave a review, and it's going to take less than 20 seconds. There's no confusion. There's no logging on. You can have a QR code to fast track even more. Something as simple as that is going to encourage people to go leave a review. It's also going to increase the number of people that leave a review in terms of the conversion rate of people that want to, but then just never get around to it. In terms of what else you can do on the insert, there's a lot more to play here. One of it is how can we offer more value? And that could be on the box or the insert. But let's say, for argument's sake, you sell a spirit, a cocktail making spirit. It could be rum, vodka, whatever the case may be. If you go want some recipe ideas or here are the top five recipes that we're enjoying this summer, scan here for 
five 60 second videos of how to make cocktails using this rum. And immediately, I mean, no one buys rum typically to just drink it straight. They're probably looking to make a cocktail, a drink or something out of it. If you can offer more value and save them the effort of going onto Google and searching some cocktail stuff, and you're going to give them some recipes, give them some 60 seconds of value, and they're going to scan that QR code or go onto a URL and go through to a landing page where you can connect with them. You can obviously first pixel them with a Facebook pixel, thumbs up. You could also obtain an email address if you want to give them them additional value add. You can say, here's the first three, but the two best ones um, we'll send through an email to you and immediately get an email address. Or alternatively, you could do something like sending them to a chatbot from that point and go, let's drip read some of these recipes and we can get a chatbot subscriber. That's the first stage. Once you've got that touch point, you can then follow up via email once they've experienced the product and you've delivered more value with a review request, mm. which is obviously tricky to do on Amazon. Like There's the review button, which you can press. Yeah. But if you're able to request a review once you've delivered additional value, the likelihood of them then coming through and leaving a positive one increases as well as the likelihood of and them actually leaving one full stop increases. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, look, I think it's very interesting, especially, you know, you talk about the 21 reviews being the magic number, right? And also, you know, I think for Australian sellers in particular, the inserts is a very new, probably a new concept, but it's, uh, it's certainly a different angle to, to approach this. Um, yeah. But yeah, very interesting. I think, I think one of the key things a lot of people always come to us inside of the academy are like, what do I put on the insert? How do I make the insert good? What should I be dealing with the insert? And one of the, one of the key things I always say is invoke an emotion. Like when they get this insert, is it on a flimsy bit of shitty card which they could quickly throw away and are not really bothered about keeping because it doesn't look that nice? Or is it something like um, Tessellate, the Tessellate towers, where you don't get sand on them, delivered a brilliant one to me the other day, they reinforce the benefits of why I bought this product. Great. Big thumbs up there. It was a nice little fold out thing, which kind of like fell on top of each other. I'm not in packaging, so I don't know the terms. So that looked nice. The colors were nice. And there was just something about it, which made me not want to throw it away straight away. It literally sat on my desk for a week until it eventually got binned. But I'd have probably kept it there for longer because I was like looking at it. There's something about it that wants it there. It invoked an emotion. And um, obviously, it had the review request on it. It also had the um, like washing instructions and those sorts of things, which also encourage you not to throw it away. I always kind of, would you put it on the fridge? It's a very good mm. kind of question to ask yourself when you look at your insert and go, is it very nice? And don't necessarily skimp out and go for the cheapest paper or the cheapest this, because that's going to come through to the experience. It's like... Um, the old film American Psycho where they're comparing business cards. Yeah. Like That's exactly what I'm talking about. You pick it up, you're like, this is nice. Yeah. I want to put that in the fridge. I don't know why I want it in the fridge. I just want it there. If it sits there, it's then on the bind. You're on the mind more. Um, they're encouraging you to use the product, etc. And in turn, the reviews, re reviews are then coming. So inserts are a brilliant thing they can be doing right now. But another one that's working particularly well in more developed marketplaces is where you're tackling people at the top of the funnel a little bit. I'm sure we'll come on to this later on and sending them onto Amazon to ultimately make a sale. So your top of funnel could be Facebook, it could mm -hmm. be Instagram, whatever. And during that process, as you send them through, you're then getting a touch point with them, which could be email or chatbot subscriber. And if they're activating a promotion or something like that, you can then follow up and be like, hey, did you purchase? We just want to check everything's okay. Um, if you went through and purchased, obviously it depends how you set it up. Sometimes you'll know if they've purchased, sometimes you won't. Ideally, you want to know. If you know they've purchased, you can follow up in a week and be like, hey, was it a good, a good experience? You can leave us a review here. And mm. that way it's more of a dropping into their inbox, dropping into their um, Facebook Messenger, um, chat saying, hey, just checking everything's okay. You could deliver value as well at the same time. So kind of giving with one hand, here's some additional value to make the product experience better, taking with the other, or would you mind dropping us a review? Yeah. 
So these are the other things which are a little bit more advanced, but not necessarily too tricky to do if you're already getting traffic from um, social platforms or third party platforms anyway. Yeah, no, look, I think it's, um, I think this is very valuable stuff for Aussie sellers just getting started, right? It's all new to them. Now that brings me to my next silver bullet question, George. Far away. Right. Is the concept of an off Amazon strategy, like this is probably a new set of words for new sellers in Amazon Australia. So how, how do you start it as a, you know, if you're starting out in Amazon Australia, everything's new to you. How, how do you start this and, and what does it mean? Sure. So I think an off Amazon strategy is, if you just think about traffic to begin with, like it's the lifeblood of many products. If you're not getting traffic, it doesn't matter how good your product is, no one's going to see it, so you're never going to succeed. So obviously what you're doing on Amazon is having great content to begin with and having an SEO-rich product listing. That's going to help with an organic perspective, getting you kind of um, visibility on page one or two in the search results. You're then going to be doing things like Amazon advertising to get some paid traffic through. We then need to be thinking about, let's send some traffic off of Amazon onto the platform. Because most people on Amazon, they're already problem and solution aware. Mm. And it wasn't always the case. A lot of people, when they first started speaking to friends at Amazon, there was a lot more of a browsing experience taking place. People were going through categories, finding, item, finding items. This doesn't happen in any other marketplace. So I think it's developed now to the point where people are problem aware. I need some drink for this weekend. Mm. They're also solution aware. I like rum. So does the missus, so do our friends, and we like cocktails. I am going onto Amazon, and I'm hunt mode, I'm in buy mode. And that's great. That's bottom of funnel. That's fantastic. And that's where your Amazon ad comes in, and you get those quick sales. It's where your organic uh, visibility is important. You get those quick sales. But there is also that top of funnel play of people who are, example again, using the alcohol. I, I know I like rum. I don't necessarily know I want it right now. I don't necessarily know I want a new product of rum. I saw some Jaffa cake gin yesterday for argument's sake. I never heard of Jaffa cake gin, but all of a sudden I'm intrigued now it's hit me. So there is, I wasn't problem or solution aware, but they've caught me a little bit higher up in the funnel and then they can funnel me back towards Amazon. So what essentially I mean with the off Amazon traffic is utilizing things like social media and some of the advertising you can do there, but also working on your organic stuff by putting out content, putting out blog posts, delivering value to people, bringing them into your, your network, your community. And if we keep with our whole thing, it could be something simple like running some Facebook ads, which are talking about either your new product launch, but you could go a little bit higher up and just engage people of like the five best cocktails this summer and engaging through a really lively post like that. And you're obviously including mm. something from your product range inside of that. But what you're obtaining is an email address, uh, a messenger bot subscriber, and that's how they're getting that PDF from you. Mm. As a result of that, you're nurturing them. So they're not necessarily ready to buy yet. They're not in that hunt mode where they're problem and solution aware. So you, you're going to nurture them slowly and build up that email list. So in turn, if you're about to launch, that email list is there ready mm. or if you have launched and you just want someone to be slowly trickling down that funnel you could be doing a big sale you could be in promotion you could be doing a black friday a prime day something like that and you're not just relying on amazon traffic you can send traffic from app off of amazon mm. which is great because you can also manipulate that traffic a little bit more as well so a lot of people, and I still bizarrely see this mistake, and it's much more common in Australian with an Australian seller, is they run a Facebook ad and the first click takes them straight through to an Amazon product detail page. Mm -hmm. They're like, I don't understand why like, I'm wasting loads of money. And mm -hmm. part of the issue is you haven't warmed them up enough to begin with. They mm -hmm. don't even know what your product is and you're just firing them over to an Amazon page. Mm -hmm. Amazon pages do convert higher than your own website pages, but you still need to essentially kind of vet them and nurture them. Like, do you want to be sending paid traffic straight to Amazon? No, because the conversion rate is going to be lower and your sales rank's not going to benefit. Mm. 
Mm. If you send them to a landing page and there's no other things on that landing page apart from details about your product, your USPs, and you deliver value, and then you go, right, you can now go through to Amazon and buy, and something as simple as that, the people clicking through to Amazon to buy are much more likely to buy, which is great because you're sending off-platform traffic onto Amazon. You can include a two-step URL where you put your keywords inside of the URL that you're looking to target, mm -hmm. your main keywords that you really want to appear on page one for. So when this nice, slightly warm customer goes through, they know what your product is, they land on your page, they've already got buying intent by this point, it looks like they've searched for your keywords in the process and they make the purchase, you're going to get ranking juice, you're going to become more relevant for those keywords mm. and your conversion rate in the listing is going to be higher, which will do you favors as well and start that flywheel. Mm. You need that little play in between because otherwise you're just sending essentially very cold traffic who have never heard of your product to your detail page and they could have just clicked on it by accident and your conversion rate is going to be poor. So it's understanding that flow a little bit which is going to help people a lot yeah look i love the little comment about the two-step url i think that's a little uh, a little takeaway for a lot of people that's um especially in amazon australia all this stuff is new for them right so. i think you've got, you've obviously got so the logic behind these there's two components to this there is a two-step url and then there's a search find by and what you're aiming to achieve with this is you want amazon to register that people are searching for a particular keyword and then finding your product and buying your product. And that's great for you because Amazon's algorithm, the A9 algorithm is seeing it that you're a relevant product for that search term. Mm. So the rankings are then going to go, well, they keep getting lots of people searching for them and converting. We better put them higher up so they can put a place on page one. So option one is the two-step URL, which is great. And there's lots of free tools out there where you can get that URL made up for you and embed it wherever. Mm. Other options include search, find, buy. And this is where you guide the potential customer to search a particular term, which could be Jaffa cake rum, or it could be um, rum cocktails. Find your particular product, and you've already given them the images, and then go through and purchase. So it's much more of an organic experience and Amazon's algorithm is going to favor that because it's like someone has searched, mm. literally searched it, clicked through, you've jumped out, you've converted them. This works better in my advice if you're already on page one to three. Mm. If you're on page four, five, six, seven, a two-step URL is more of, the, more of the preference there. Yeah, okay, cool. So George, in uh, the final question, um, and if you, in, in two minutes, how would you, you know, what would you say if you were an Amazon seller, right, in Australia, what, what, would, what should they be preparing for as Amazon Australia matures and catches up to the other Amazons around the world? Mm -hmm. I think the best thing we, we notice this when working at Amazon is the US always releasing features first, and then it's going to go to Germany, Japan, UK, one of those three, and then it slowly floods into the rest of the market. So it's very, very important that they're continuously monitoring what's happening in more developed marketplaces and the strategies that are taking place there. So one would be like rebate automation and how that works. Mm -hmm. So instead of offering a promotion, you're offering sellers a, a rebate where you give them a back end kind of kickback. But the there are certain ways to do that well and other ways to do it badly. Another element that we're seeing a lot is the importance of Amazon advertising, how sophisticated it's getting and how it can be very successful. If you jump on it here in Australia, it's going to be the cheapest clicks you're ever going to get mm. at this point in time. It's like, when was the best day to plant a tree today? When was the second best day, like 10 years ago, whatever the analogy is, it's exactly the same. Like when should you start your Amazon ads? Like, ideally six months ago as soon yeah. as you launched yeah. and that's it's only going to get more expensive if you look at all the graphs of kind of how cost per click goes up in pretty much every single um instance so advertising is a big component if you can master that early you can really get yourself lots of traffic and if you look at what's happened in other marketplaces that have launched those who jump and kind of get that early leader advantage, it can be very mm. difficult to catch them. So advertising is going to help you with that. 
understanding that you need to continuously develop your own your education around advertising if you're managing it yourself or looking for alternative solutions because it can be difficult to manage everything but advertising is huge um uh content's huge but that's kind of a given um i always recommend people look at developed markets to see if your listing is good and see okay what are people selling rum in the US do with their listings? Because mm. they've had more time, it's more competitive, it's more aggressive. How yeah. are they standing out? Let's replicate it here. Um, so the ads would be a good one. And then looking at kind of how rebates are playing into it, that's important at the moment. Um, and content is, is always going to be um, kind of the king because you can send as much traffic as you like via advertising, via funnels. But if you're not able to convert them because you've got shoddy images and poor copy, it's kind of all a waste of time. So getting your foundation right um, and then focusing on what's happening globally and reading about and understanding what's happening globally to then align your next three, six, 12 month strategies with that. Yep. Cool. All right. Thank you, George. Um, very, very insightful session. Uh, obviously, a lot of new thoughts for a lot of Amazon Australia sellers there. Um, if anyone has any comments or any questions or any anything else they want to know from George or myself, please feel free to leave a comment below. We will get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. Cheers.